Uh, we have head coach Dan Burt with us. Junior April Robinson and senior Devonair Workman. We're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach. Coach, are you ready? I'm incredibly proud of my team, our team, our seniors. We started this journey with nine people who had never put on a jersey in August, who had never put a Duquesne jersey on, seven of them being freshmen. The three seniors, the two that you see here, and Millie Gronish, who's not up on the panel right now, have exemplified all of our standards and what we are at Duquesne. And I'm incredibly proud of them. Uh, they are great individuals on the court, off the court, in the classroom. What they showed tonight, I thought, was composure and confidence. And they gave everything that they had on that floor for 40 minutes. And we fell to a much better team. I think I said it earlier, the most dominant team in the world we lost to tonight. And we gave it everything we had. Um, you know, I'm reminded of, uh, and I'm paraphrasing when I say it, everybody's got a plan. Mike, the Mike Tyson quote, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. Well, in that second quarter, we got punched in the face. And uh, instead of losing what the plan was, I think we, we still battle. And uh, if you look at the quarter breakdown, um, we didn't win a quarter, but we, we certainly battled. All right, we're going to start with questions for the student athletes, and we'll go to Rich first. Rich Capola, Fox Television. In April, you knocked down a couple of threes at the start. You guys clearly handled their pressure uh, much better than Robert Morris. They had a lot of burnouts and all that stuff. You do a lot of good things, and then you look and you have time to down 21. Demoralized. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was really hard, but you know, we all went to the locker room and um, everyone had their heads up high. We still had 20 minutes to play um, and we gave it all we got. Um, everyone did a part and we still believed. Obviously, they're the better team, though. Good time in front here. Mark Um, I mean, they were switching the speed of the game, the physicality they brought. It's just unbelievable. Um, obviously, you know, they scouted us just as much as we scouted them, so they were blowing up some of our plays, um, and we kind of got in scattered situations, but, you know, props to them, best team in the country. Down here in front. Dev, how much did their size and length affect, uh, you know, it looks like you guys missed a bunch of shots in the rim in that first half, but you know, they changed things a little early on. How much did their size and length affect you guys were going to the There's some big girls. Their arms are really long. <laughs> um, like, I guess for, for me, I know um, their arms are bothered, like, the view of the basket, but I was still trying to go up against them. I wasn't backing down or anything like that, but their length really did bother us on going up into the basket, so. Okay, right in front of you. Well, we made history. We made it to the NCAA tournament. We won the first game in the tournament, made it to the second. Um, I'm actually glad we went out to the number one team in the country than anybody else. They're a great team. What other way? Like, this is the best way to go out for me. And I think we kind of set the bar really high for Duquesne women's basketball. Um, our graduate assistant, Olivia Bresnahan, actually just stayed in the locker room that um, the seniors and the upperclassmen set the bar so high that in future years to come, you know, it's not, it's about making it to the tournament, but it's about getting to the next round and the next round and continue making this program um, as good as they can be. Yeah, if you had to play this game tomorrow, what would be some of the things you would change if you had to I 
feel like you're back in school? <laughs> you got class in the morning. Um, I think our game plan would stay the same. Uh, maybe some better decision making on the offensive end. Um, I think we played well defense tonight, the best to our ability. Just change little things in our offense. I think our game plan is great. They're just a good team. They're a great team. I want to cry, but um, hugging everybody. It was just, you know, to have the opportunity to be here and to be a part of a group, a team with a group of girls that just get along so well. It's just, it's unbelievable. And, you know, if I could redo it all, all over again, I would definitely do it. And, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at if it wasn't for everyone in that locker room. Okay, anything else for the student athletes? One more, okay, go ahead. Well, I could tell my son about it. <laughs> Got to play the number one team in the country, and I think we all balled out as best as best as we could. We fought to the end. Um, similar Harry, so I don't have a kid yet, but that's how my kids are day. <laughs> but it was overall, it was a great experience. Um, hopefully our girls can experience again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. About 24 minutes left on the Aruba locker room. At this time, we'll have questions for the head coach. All right, front. Stretch. I wouldn't even say we played great in the first quarter. We played well. Um, I, I think that when we started at Dayton and we really smacked Dayton early, I think that was our best start of the year. And, and today would probably be about the second best. It was outstanding. Um, but, you know, it, it, I want to choose my words carefully when I say it. Um, they play incredible defense. And what I mean that their length does bother you because they have great size in every position, and uh, they got some tips, and we did some things a little bit uncharacteristic. Uh, we were taking balls to the, we were taking shots at the, at the rim where I thought that you know, we could have gotten to the free throw line, and, and we didn't. And uh, I was disappointed in that. I thought we should have gotten to the free throw line, um, but that's the way the game is, and we knew that going in. Uh, and, and let's be frank, I mean, they're a vastly superior team. I mean, they're a great basketball team from their coaching to their players. I mean, they're just they're a great basketball team. But we're pretty good, too. And we gave them everything we had. And uh, they just wear you down. And everybody says that who plays them. They wear you down. They grind you down. Uh, they're in tremendous shape and, and their length and, and how hard they play. Um, it's something that we aspire to. It's something that we've aspired to since I was uh, named the head coach three years ago. And... We'll take a little bit of time off, and we'll get back at it, and we'll get back to the lab and try to figure out how we can get to that point. Okay. And what is it about playing Connecticut, like you said, that you know, not only does it go from a, a, a high game to a 10-point game, it goes from a 10-point game to a 30-point game. Seemingly in the point of an eye, what is it about them in particular that allows them to just poke the ball away like that? They can really shoot the basketball. Uh, and we dared them to shoot it. Uh, if, if we were going to get beat, we were going to get beat with, you know, Mariah Jefferson goes six for eight from the three-point line. I mean, she, she just makes shots left and right. But, you know, we were going to dare Tuck to shoot it. We were going to dare, you know, Stewart to put it, you know, to shoot, to shoot it. You know, Samuel said we were willing to fly out at her and make her put it on the floor for more than one dribble. And uh, to their credit, they made shots. And... Um, they're a great shooting basketball team with everything else that they do. And, uh, yeah. Go up here, Coach. Coach, uh, you stand in the finals and talk about the whole press conference. You did that, you did what you wanted What are some of the key points you stressed on the house to the Well, the, 
it was really, it, we're not necessarily out of it. We've come back from bigger, not bigger deficits, but in the past we've been, we've come back from deficits that are similar in size. And you're trying to sell hope. You're trying to sell hope. I mean, that's, that's part of what you're doing in the locker room as a coach. And uh, so we were doing that. And then it's all tactical. You know, th there was no Rudy or Braveheart or Merkel or Nice speech. Not at the beginning of the game, not at the end of the game. There was none of that. Um, I want our kids to feel like we belong. Um, I want them to see what they have to do in this off season so that we can get to another level. And, you know, so at halftime, we talked a lot about tactical changes. Um, we talked about the first five minutes, excuse me, the first three minutes is actually how we described it. The first three minutes of the second half, again, they're going to try to dominate you again. How will you match up physically? And we were just trying to literally win four, three to four minute periods at a time. And, and if we go back and look at the tape, we've, we probably won two or three, maybe four minute segments. And uh, there's certainly no moral victories, but we have to uh, take that away and say, hey, the most dominant team in the country, we matched up at least for a quarter with them and, and we gave them everything we could. Second round. I said uh, in August to her personally, and didn't share this until probably in December, um, I talked to her about, you know, you already had a Hall of Fame career. Um, there's no question you'll be a Hall of Famer. Lead us to the NCAA tournament, and your jersey will go in the rafters. And we only have two other players with their jerseys retired. Um, it's very clear that she's the second best player that has ever played at Duquesne. She's the most successful player who's ever played at Duquesne. Um, very simply, after we had a coaching change after her freshman year, when people were whispering things in her ear to transfer, she stayed. That sophomore year, we challenged her to get better, and she got better. As a junior, we challenged her to be more of a leader, a vocal leader, and she did that. And then you saw the senior year that she had. Um, we're, we owe everyone in that locker room owes so much to April Robinson and everything that she has done for our basketball program. And uh, I absolutely love the kid. Love her to death. Right, Zach, and Pat. Dan, obviously you guys were not based on the box who were able to test the high speed you guys were able to accomplish. But what do you do from that result as a measuring stick to build towards future teams? Well, you know, when you give us one-on-one -on -one coverage in the post, we're pretty dangerous against just about anybody. Um, Amadea didn't finish shots tonight, but you know we're we're very capable of multiple moves in the post and, and do very well at that. Um, we've got to become a lot stronger. We've got to get in the weight room. Uh, we've got to do a lot better job in the weight room, and that's going to be critical. Um, our freshmen have to get experience. Um, you know we have to get some more backups experience. Now we have a transfer who's not here today. Um, we become eligible, and she's an outstanding post player, probably the best post player on our team. And so we'll be welcoming Judith Soleil uh, to our lineup next year, and we're really excited about that. And we'll see what happens. We may have to move Kadri Loss to the three and make her kind of like a Samuelson type. Um, we'll see how that goes, but that's next year. We're just going to continue to focus on, on this team for a little bit longer. Okay. There was a second quarter where we were playing Stewart three separate shots. Well, what it did for me is, is I thought she was fouled on at least one of them, and there was no call. But then we went down the other end, and there was a foul call on a touch. So I, you know, I, as a coach, I, I'm, I'm living about it. <laughs> but that's the way it is. And that's just the way it goes. Uh, do I think it's demoralizing? Yeah, for 30 seconds, so we move on. Good, good players don't let that affect them long term, and I don't think that I don't think that affected us long term. If you know anything about Amadeus Samashi, you're going to know that that's not going to bother her after 30 seconds. That's a kid that is probably the smartest kid on a team that has a lot of smart kids on it. Kid speaks multiple languages. She's got an internship with Price Waterhouse Cooper this summer. It, it, that's not going to affect her. She's going to keep going at you. Um, she may be skinny, we call her Hungarian spaghetti, but she's going to give you everything that she has and she's going to battle her butt off. And that kid has grown so much from her freshman year to this year. Um, I, I just don't see, I, I didn't see how it demoralized this necessarily. I, you know, hey, they're UConn, they're going to make their runs. That's the way they are. And they hit some shots. I mean, they made some shots and they got to the free throw line. We didn't get to the free throw line in the first half. 
Last one. Well, I think the biggest thing is getting our, our freshmen acclimated to the speed that you have to play at. Even Kadri and Loss, who played pretty well today, um, you know, when we're cutting, we're jogging. If you watch UConn, and we're going to watch this game multiple times with our kids, they sprint to everything. They sprint on everything. And uh, this is the best game that we could have had all year in terms of growth for our team in the future because they just showed us how hard you have to play if you want to reach a level that is a sweet 16 level or better. And you know, hopefully one day we'll be able to come back here uh, to the NCAA tournament and be able to win a couple games and, and maybe do something along those lines. Um, it, we will have to, it, what this game shows also is, is the weight room. You know, very frankly, we, we have to embrace the weight room more. Um, We've got, if for a team that shoots the three, we don't shoot it at a high enough percentage. And that's going to be our kids getting in the gym and really working on their game uh, and really shooting the three more. Um, and and I'm, I'm, listening, I'm listing all the detriments of our team. But at the end of the day, we won 28 games, guys. I mean, we had the second most road wins in the country. We're 18 in the RPI. And when I started nine years ago, they won seven games. I mean, you know, we've come an awful long way in, in that time. And, and you know, the standard has been raised tremendously. And uh, like our graduate assistant, Luke Bresnahan said, this senior group has raised the bar to an incredible level. And now those freshmen, sophomores, and juniors will have to reach that level. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you for supporting women's basketball. Thank you, everyone.